In this video, we're going to focus on the ester hydrolysis mechanism. We're going to go over the acid catalyzed version and the base catalyzed version. So let's begin. Let's say if we have methyl acetate as the ester. What's going to happen if we react it with water and HCl? What products will be produced in this reaction? If you add water to it under acidic conditions, it's going to convert into a carboxylic acid. The byproducts of this reaction will be methanol. This group is going to leave. Now feel free to pause the video and propose a mechanism for this reaction. Show how we can go from the ester to the carboxylic acid under acidic conditions. Now the first thing that we need to do is show what happens when we put water with hydrochloric acid. Now hydrochloric acid is a very strong acid. It ionizes to completion. And so in the presence of HCl, water is going to act as the bronsillary base. It's going to grab a hydrogen and the bond between H and Cl will break. Chlorine is going to pull those electrons toward itself. Right now chlorine has three lone pairs, but it's about to have four. So the products of this reaction will be H2O plus and the chloride ion. Now at this point, we can react the ester with H3O plus. So what do you think is going to happen here? What's going to happen when these two get together? The first step for any acid catalyzed reaction is usually protonation. Now which oxygen will be protonated? The red oxygen or the white oxygen? What would you say? Well, to answer this question, it helps if you draw the resonance structure. This oxygen can donate a pair of electrons, pushing the pi bond to that oxygen. And this will give us a resonance structure that looks like this. So notice that the red oxygen has a negative formal charge. The white oxygen has a positive formal charge. This tells us that the red oxygen is more nucleophilic than the white oxygen. So the red oxygen is going to protonate or get protonated by the acid. So it's going to grab a hydrogen and this bond is going to break. So this is going to be the structure that we currently have. Now what do you think is going to happen next after this step? After protonation, once this oxygen has a positive charge due to the hydrogen, this carbon is going to be more partially positive. As a result, water is attracted to it. The oxygen atom in water has a partial negative charge, so it's electrostatically attracted to this carbon, and therefore it's going to attack it. Every reaction in the ester hydrolysis acid catalyzed reaction is reversible. So this is the intermediate that we now have, also known as a tetrahedral intermediate. Now in the next step, we need to get rid of the OCH3 group. In order to do that, we need to protonate it. At this point, OCH3 by itself is a bad leaving group. If it leaves now, it's going to leave as OCH3-, which shouldn't exist under acidic conditions. This is okay under basic conditions, but not under acidic conditions. Right now, this is a good leaving group. So this oxygen could form a double bond and kick out water, taking the reaction back this way. But we don't want that to happen. We want to go forwards and not backwards. Somehow, we need to transfer this hydrogen onto the OCH3 group. How can we do that? The answer is by means of the solvent. Water 
can act as a weak base and it can take away this hydrogen. So now we have this intermediate. We're going to have two hydroxyl groups. And now this water molecule is now in the form of HDO+. So at this point, this oxygen can grab a hydrogen, regenerating water. So now the OCH3 group has been converted to a good leaving group. So in the next step, we can kick it out. We can use any of the two hydroxyl groups to accomplish that task. But let's use the one on the top. This oxygen is going to use one of its lone pairs, form the pi bond, expelling the methyl group out. I mean, not the methyl group, but the methanol molecule. So at this point, what we have is a protonated carboxylic acid molecule. So we're almost done. And we also have methanol. Now the last thing that we need to do is use a weak base to get rid of this hydrogen. We can use methanol or we can use water to accomplish that task. It really depends on which one is in greater uh, concentration and which one is at the right place at the right time. Now this methanol is very close to the molecule, so you could use it. But then again, at the beginning of the reaction, long before equilibrium is established, there's a lot more water molecules than methanol molecules. So chances are the water molecule is going to be at the right place at the right time to get rid of that hydrogen. And so that's how we can show the mechanism for the acid-catalyzed ester hydrolysis reaction. And notice that we've regenerated our acid catalyst. And chloride is still in the solution somewhere floating around. It's a suspected ion. Now what's going to happen if we take methyl acetate and react it with sodium hydroxide in water under basic conditions. Now we're going to get the carboxylic acid, but in its deprotonated form. And we're still going to get methanol as a leaving group. If we use a one-to-one -one ratio between sodium hydroxide and the ester, we're going to get methanol as a product. If we use excess sodium hydroxide, it can deprotonate the methanol producing the methoxide, CH3O-. Hydroxide and methoxide in terms of base strength, they're roughly equal. Water has a pKa of 15.7, but uh, methanol has a pKa of 15.5. So methanol is slightly more acidic than water, which means that methoxide is slightly stronger than hydroxide in terms of base strength. But let's go over the mechanism. Hydroxide is going to act as the nucleophile. It's going to attack the carbon breaking the pi bond, producing a tetrahedral intermediate that looks like this. The first step is reversible. The oxygen with a negative charge can regenerate the double bond, and it can kick out OCH3 or OH. In terms of base strength, they're about the same, but we're going to kick out OCH3 because we want to get to this product. So once that happens, we're going to get a carboxylic acid. At this point, do you think the reaction is reversible or irreversible at this point? The reaction is irreversible. Let's talk about why. Once methoxide forms, will it attack the carbonyl carbon the same way as hydroxide attacked the carbonyl carbon? In this case, it's not going to. Notice that there is an acidic hydrogen. Carboxylic acids are weak acids, and under basic conditions, they won't survive long. So methoxide is not going to act as a nucleophile in the presence of this acidic hydrogen. It's going to go straight for the hydrogen, and that's why the reaction doesn't go backwards. In this case, hydroxide couldn't act as a base. None of these hydrogens are acidic, so it can only act as a nucleophile. 
So once hydroxide takes off the hydrogen, then we're going to get the acetate ion, which under basic conditions, it's going to remain in this form. And methoxide, which gained the hydrogen, is now in the form of methanol. So this is the mechanism under basic conditions. Now here's a question for you. Can we technically call hydroxide a base catalyst in this particular reaction? Even though hydroxide speeds up the reaction, in neutral water, the ester won't react to form the carboxylic ion or even carboxylic acid. You need to speed it up using an acid catalyst or using a base. Now the reason why hydroxide is not considered a catalyst, technically speaking, is because it's not regenerated in this reaction. Hydroxide is consumed in the reaction. Notice that it adds to the carbonyl group. And eventually, it's later deprotonated. So it's incorporated into the ester, converting it to the carboxylic acid, or the deprotonated version of the carboxylic acid. So because it's consumed, it's not considered a catalyst.